Hello, everyone. It is Marjoram of Sage and Marjoram back with another video. And today we're looking at my color camps. So I'm still working through my archive of videos because I record every single project. <laughs> and sometimes those projects take days uh, and lots of footage to get through. Anyways, uh, this is my first project working with two shuttles, as you can see. I was able to pick up that Handy Woman shuttle, which is the lovely wallet handmade shuttle. And I absolutely adore it. It was a Christmas gift, essentially. It was I bought it with Christmas money. And it made my life so much easier in this project and in projects that I've done since then. Having two shuttles instead of just one, it's been amazing. Um, so this is a 17 color gamp. It's really 16 are the body colors. And then I have that kind of foresty blue green. That is the border, both in the warp and the weft. I used it as a border, but I guess it kind of is a 17 color gamp because of the way that bluish green interacts with everything else too. And I chose that because of the colors on the edge. You can see one edge of my gamp has a green and the other edge has that kind of baby blue. Um, yeah, lots to talk about today. And also <laughs> I'm like trying to figure out how I'm gonna talk while also talking about what I'm doing here. Um, I recently found out that I was awarded the School of Sweet Georgia scholarship which is so exciting and really a game changer for me just to have that extra bit of money towards my crafting so I don't have to rush out to try to sell everything I make or wait until I have extra money to buy more supplies. It's so exciting um, and such a big opportunity put together by Felicia and the team over at School of Sweet Georgia and then by the community as well. Um, I'm so grateful. And so excited for that. This is one of those projects that I did while I was waiting for other supplies. I was waiting to make my twill gamp for class. So I went through and I found some knitting yarn. This is all knitting yarn from Knit Picks, actually, I believe. Yes, this is palette yarn from Knit Picks. And I just wanted to keep doing something. So I threw these on the loom while I was waiting for stuff for my twill gamps. Okay, so. Like I said, this is a 16 to 17 color color gamp, and I'm trying to do it a little bit differently. So I warped with only 16 of the body colors, so the rainbow going across the middle, but then I decided I would do sections where they were full blocks and then sections alternating, which is why I wanted to use the two shuttles. And that was just so I could see even more of the optical mixing of the different sections and just see, you know, what happens if I end up doing some color alternating in a different project in the future. So that's why I have two shuttles loaded up at once. Okay, so we're going to do all the basics. I'm spreading the warp. This time I'm using, <laughs> this is a big kind of knobbly homespun. And I'm using that just because it is acrylic and I didn't have to worry about it sticking to this wool. It might not look like it, but palette wool by Knit Picks is surprisingly sticky, which I didn't expect. I've worked with this many times before, mostly crocheting actually. Um, I'm a much stronger crocheter than I am a knitter. So I had never really noticed it being sticky when I was crocheting, even if I had to take out an entire project. But yeah, so hopefully that will change soon. I'm currently enrolled in the School of Sweet Georgia knitting study group on Lace Mastery and hoping that it will <laughs> make me a more confident knitter. Okay. So if you have seen some of my other videos, you know by now that I like to hemstitch the end. Even if I'm going to twist the fringe, I almost always hemstitch 
just because I can't, I can't not hemstitch. I'm always so worried about things coming apart when they come off the loom. So I will hemstitch it on the loom no matter what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> And I am going in with that same border color. That's going to be my border for this gamp and then also for my secret, but not so secret, second gamp that I ended up working out in the end. Okay. Um, and I will just share the way that I hemstitch kind of changes depending on the project. So for this project, I think I decided to hemstitch in bundles of five. Normally I would hemstitch, I would go over three, up two, and then over three, up zero, and go back through the loop that I'd made previously in order to make that little hemstitch X that will hold all of the warp yarns together. Um, for this one, I decided I would do bundles of five because of the warping that I'd done. So these colors are each warped in bundles of 10. And then I think that the edges are in groups of four. Yeah, the edges are groups of four. So I decided I would do five just to make it easy. It would be easier for me that way, not have the colors mixing so much at the edge which I guess really doesn't matter, but I just wanted it to look that specific way. So here we are, we're gathering all that up to start doing my hem stitching. And I'll also share, I chose this border yarn. This is a silk merino mix because it has a little bit less give than the rest of it. Like this wool is very stretchy and I wanted the piece to still have some integrity. <laughs> in the end, so I was like, let me do a border that has a little bit less stretch. It still will be fine in the end. This is very slippery yarn, so I'm not worried about bunching or anything along the edges. Um, and that wasn't an issue, but I wanted something to, to give it a little bit of structure. There we go, yeah. So I did, I went over four up to there on the edge, and then I'll go over five when I start doing the actual sections. I actually really enjoyed this project. It felt like it went really fast, despite being so many different colors and all of the different changes that I made to it <laughs> as I was going. This, I should disclose why there's no like warping part of the video or dressing the loom and that's because I had originally warped with a different border color between each of the individual colors here. I was going to set it at a slightly higher set in the read and I was going to have border colors also in the silk merino. Um, there are different gam styles for color gams and I I'd seen some where they ended up making a matrix of squares with border sections between. And I was like, let me try that. And then after I'd done the warp, I hated it. So I sat there for probably an hour and a half is how long it took me to just wind onto the back beam instead of like, usually winding on takes, I don't know, 20 minutes because it takes time to sort through the rattle. But it took so long because I decided to go through and take out all of the <laughs> border sections that I'd put in except for the two on the edge. So that was an experience, to say the least. But I just decided after I had finished warping, I was like, I'd rather see smooth color transitions, as smooth as you can get when you're making a matrix of squares. Anyways, that's why there's <laughs> not that section in this video. I recorded it and then it was just messy. It was me all over the place and pulling yarns all over the place. You wouldn't be able to tell from the way the warp looks now. It looks so organized and everything's in its place. <laughs> but that was a lot. Same with the threading. The threading, as you can see, I'm weaving in tabby, but I have a 12 threading in here and I, it took me days to decide what 
kind of twill pattern I wanted to do. And then it took so long to put together because it was a 30 petal repeat, I believe. Yeah, it was 30 and then inverted and then 30. And then the middle had a double section and then it goes back and flips in a mirror on the other side. It was just, it was a mess. <laughs> it, but we'll see later that I think it paid off. I was originally going to do this all in twill and I decided I should see just like some plain color mixing in tabby first. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm going in with just the first color. I'm working my way from right to left. So I'm going to start with that lime green and I'm going to end over in baby blue. But I am going to be doing like what I shared, pulling out the second shuttle. And we're going to do alternating with the shuttle on the other side. And it kind of works out really well because the shuttles will enter from the left. And then when it's their time to do a block on their own, they'll enter from the right. And so I'm just moving through the shuttles in that way, alternating back and forth. But what I'm doing in this next section, it's kind of hard to see on the loom, but I think you can, if you let your eyes go out of focus every now and then, you can see the optical mixing already start, even with the three colors. Even with all the spacing of this being under tension, I think it's really interesting to see. So because this was my first time, by the way, working with two boat shuttles, this was my first time dealing with some of the edge management, which is no problem to me now. I actually just finished what was a secret project for my dad's birthday that was a hound's tooth. Um, I've done hound's tooth before on my rigid head loom, and it's not really a struggle for me working with the edge, like carrying up the threads. But in the beginning, I was <laughs> just getting used to how these were crossing and where I was putting them. So that's why I might look like I'm fumbling a little bit. Yeah. I should say this project also went really quickly. I was really surprised because it feels like it wouldn't go that quick with so many different colors and then also adding in those sections where we're going back and forth, but it really was only 10 picks per color and then alternating. So it felt like it went so fast. Now, if you look at my warp right now and the weft going across, you can see it looks pretty wavy after I advanced my warp. And this is something I think I've talked about in a recent video, but Maybe if this was cotton, that would worry me <laughs> and that my tension was like really off, but I'm not worried here and you'll see it worked out fine. Even just off tension before wet finishing, because this wool is so stretchy, I'm not worried that the threads are not going straight across right now. Um, they'll find their way back. It really is just advancing the warp kind of makes it look uneven but you can see when I'm beating I'm placing them exactly where I want them and when I take it off tension they go right back where they're supposed to be it's just part of advancing the warp I also I really love this shuttle I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it as much because it was thicker than the shaft if you look at the like tips or if you look at them side on, look at the side profile of the two different shuttles. They're the same length, but the Handy Woman Shop shuttle is a bit thicker. At the same time, it's so light, it's so comfortable in my hand. I have really big hands, so it like fits in my hand a lot better than a shack. It's so pretty and it's so smooth. It, it's I think it's my favorite shuttle right now. And I just love, I like having nice tools as well. It's the same like when I'm planning, I like having a nice planner with keyboards. If you saw my Instagram or my website recently, I make my own keyboards because I like having something nice. I feel like I'm much more likely to use something if it looks nice. So I like having nice tools. I think that we all do, right?
here, that berry color that's on the walnut shuttle right now, that actually, after I did this project, that became one of the colors in my twill cam. It looks a lot bluer, I think. To me, it looks a lot bluer when it's between these different colors and a lot duller as well, like more reserved. But it's really like a bright berry purple right between the periwinkle and that super light baby pink. But it looks so dark here. I thought it was really interesting. The way that our eyes see color next to other color. So I am stopping every now and then, as you see, and I'm just pointing out to myself, because I filmed these as an archive for myself as well. I'm talking in this video, you all can't hear it, but I'm talking to myself, telling myself what colors I like, what combos might be good in the future, things like that. And I really, I dislike red, I dislike orange, I dislike yellow. They feel very aggressive colors to me, but in specific combinations, I just couldn't get over them. Like, if you look at these, I, see, I stopped again <laughs> to zoom in on myself. If you look at the pink and the orange in that berry color with this orange and red, it makes this stunning, like, spiced wine color. And the pink, I love pink, but I'm not really a hot pink person. I like kind of a more natural blush pink or a baby pink or millennial pink. But I really loved it mixed with that orange and red it made like this perfect kind of peachy sunset color so i'm sure i'll use those in the future that's also part of why i chose to do this project with this yarn one i wanted to put palette yarn through its paces because it feels to me pretty weak it's a two-ply it's a knitting yarn so i was like i don't know if it'll stand up to the tension it is super thin and as I discovered it's pretty sticky but I had no issues it didn't snap I had no breakage at all none of it got too thin it all rebounded on itself and it fold really well in the end and I also wanted to do it with this yarn because it's readily available I think they might even sell it on Amazon but you can get it from nitpicks and they have so many different colors so I was like if I'm gonna do a color gam I want to do something where I know I can get the same exact color, the same exact yarn. And it's really inexpensive. Palette yarn is like pretty cheap when it comes to wool. It's a fingering weight, two ply, super soft wool. So that's why I chose this yarn. I was like, if I ever wanna do just like a quick project, I wanna see how it looks, how it feels, how it behaves on the loom. And I was really impressed. So, okay. It is the next day and I am cutting off the loom. What I didn't record is some of my late night weaving because I get some of my best crafting done late at night or late in the evening, I think. So it was like maybe 10 or 11 that night and I decided I had the extra warp. I was filming this video. I might as well go ahead and do a twill gamp. So I did. <laughs> I started at like 11 o'clock that night and it only took me maybe an hour and a half, two hours, to weave the next section. And so I ended up with two. I think it's always important to leave extra warp. I like having room to experiment or just to mess around on the loom. So I usually warp up one and a half or two times what I think I'm going to need. Also, in case I make a mistake. <laughs> and so this time I... Didn't make any mistakes, so I decided I would just use it. This first bit, that's just bobbin clearing. I was getting all of my bobbins ready for the School of Sweet Georgia twill gamp. So I just wanted to get everything off, and those will not go to waste. That'll be coasters. And then moving on to the next section, since we're going in reverse, here is the twill color gamp. So you can see that pattern that I designed. It's a really big repeat, and it's a mix of kind of Rose Path and m and And then the treadling was the same. It was Tromp as writ. So it made these really interesting sections. <laughs> and then here is the actual tabby color gamp. And even just off of tension for a minute, you can already see it rebounding. Everything's going to its place. The optical mixing is already like 
crazy to me with the colors that we're getting. I was very happy with this, even without having done anything to finish it at this point. There you can see, very little waste, and all of that leftover yarn is going into my scrap pile that will eventually be turned into yarn. And here we go, it's time to start looking at it. Don't mind me, I was bumping into everything, <laughs> moving the loom and trying to get back so I could start looking at these. So I like to look at my work before I finish it and then after wet finishing and then after steaming. So here it is, fresh off the loom, nothing has been done, just loom state. It's been literally probably a minute and a half in real life since I took it off tension. And you can already see everything rebounding into these gorgeous colors. I like to work with color based on hue. And so that's why you'll see I did not pay any attention to level of white, black, or gray. So shade tone tint. Uh, I arranged the colors by their hues because my eyes prefer to see hue shift, whereas someone else might have arranged these by their tone or their tint or their shade, so with regard to how bright or dark they are, like how much white or black or gray is mixed in. Um, and I think it just depends on how you see color. For me, I see it hue first, and then I can, you know, put other layers on top of that, so that's why I chose to do it this way. And I'm glad that I did because I love the way that Matrix came out. It gave me a lot of good information. And then here in the twill, I just wanted to see the color over movement. And I was very happy with this as well. I was surprised at the sections that I liked because I, I really don't like yellow, but I loved that really super, super pale yellow and that super pale baby pink over these rainbow colors. So I'll probably be using those colors in a project sometime soon. And I'll definitely be using this twill pattern again. I love it. I made this up from a couple of different patterns that I found in the Handweavers pattern directory by Ann Dixon. And I just kind of meshed together different patterns that I thought, oh, this might look interesting if I combine them. I don't yet have a weaving draft software, so I'm just doing this all in my head and then I'm writing it down on some draft sheets that I made for myself. But I think it came out well. I mean, I, I like it. It's very busy, but at the same time, I think about doing this like tone on tone or like on sister tones, like a maybe a tan and then a mauve that's like super desaturated. I think it would be so pretty with a busy pattern on top. Yeah, I'm very happy with this. I'm so happy with it. And it's only been off the loom for a couple of minutes. So that's why <laughs> it's time to go and actually finish it. And I'm nervous as always because so much can happen when wet finishing. I'm not so nervous now because I've taken magic in the water and I feel much more in tune with wet finishing thanks to School Sweet Georgia and Laura Fry teaching that course. So this is a vinegar soak, which is what I usually do with protein fiber if I'm worried about bleeding. I saw a couple of folks do this. I think that Curly and Yarny also does this here on YouTube. And actually it might have been one of Curly and Yarny's videos where I got this idea. But I love, I love it. It makes sense because when you dye yarn, if it's wool, you will usually soak it with vinegar and you add more vinegar as you're dyeing to try to get the yarn to take up all the color. So this is gonna soak for two or three hours and then I'll do my normal wet finishing of very hot water and some Castile soap and jasmine essential oil just for something nice to smell. <laughs> so here we are, this is the next day. And I have wet finished, dried, 
I did not steam it like I usually do. Although now I'm working on getting a, a heat press. I think I'm just going to get a Cricut Easy Press because they're much more affordable. They're like very inexpensive and I can, you know, add pressure myself. You can see what's interesting though, even though there is some wrinkling just from it being freshly wet finished, there's also some tracking, which I was interested to see. There's like actual tracking, some of the diagonal lines that came out of the weaving. I was very happy with that one. And then if we come over here to the twill gam, or I should say twill colored gam, I was very happy with this one as well. No tracking because it's twill, but some really, really pretty colors and really nice combos. I think it all came together really well. If you want to see more of these, I have photos up on my Instagram. I believe they're in my story highlights. And then I also have some photos on my website, which is linked below. I'm very happy with these. I will definitely be using these. I might sell them as table runners or I might just keep them. I feel like I've got what I need. I made these as a document and I'm very happy with the information I received from creating these color gams. Thank you all so much for watching. I will be back with more videos very soon. Right now I'm working on my knitting. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how I do. I'm so anxious about it, but not. it's not a halting anxiety. It's anxious, but excited because I can't wait to see what I can learn about my knitting when I've already learned so much and it's been four days now. Okay, I'll see you all sometime soon. Bye-bye.